That's good. That's good, man. No, that's beautiful. I dig it. So uh, a couple of things uh, we're, we're going to talk about some some heavy topics. here. I know we've been thinking about this uh, for uh, a few minutes at this point. OK, so first thing we have here is Xbox is still committed to making consoles. We kind of touched on that uh, briefly. We don't think that's going away. So I think we both agree there. Right. Mm-hmm. So we're not going to focus too much time there. Uh, but uh, what I do want to spend time on a little bit is uh, Microsoft. Are they becoming a third party? What does that mean? There's a big announcement happening this Thursday. That's the 15th of February. And they're going to give you know some additional information. I believe that's going to be on the Xbox uh, podcast. You sent me that news. You know, Thank you for sending that over. I do appreciate that. Uh, so, so what do you think is going to happen? And we could talk about console wars a little bit, you know, how I feel about that. Uh, but what do you think is going to oh, happen man. on Thursday if you had to uh, give some predictions? I don't think it's going to be uh, something that's going to be negative, of course, yeah. for Xbox. But I think it's, it should be a positive thing for the industry. That's that's my hope. Well, go ahead. I think it's a plus. But I, the fact that it's going to be Bill Spencer, Matt Booty and Sarah Bond, the, the fact that they're bringing in the big people at the top to talk about this, this is going to be serious. So, you know, even though we don't want to substantiate on rumors and stuff, uh, you speculate. A I, little I bit. just think they're yeah, I just think that they're going to be really serious about what the future is and give us a, a roadmap moving forward and what we can expect, because I feel like every time we hear a rumor or anyone says anything, all of a sudden the internet runs crazy with it. And we're like, oh my God, Master Chief's going to be on PlayStation and Starfield's going to the Switch and Hi-Fi Rush is gone and Sea of Thieves. And now we don't have any exclusives. So now I got to take a chainsaw to my Xbox. You know, people going really wild. (laughs) <laughs> right, people, go, right. people going wild man right, right, keep so, going keep going all right, go ahead. yeah they're people are crazy man right, uh, right. but ultimately uh, to the consumer like what does that change about most of us i mean some of us might own a pc or a switch or a playstation and if you don't that's the difficult part is that a lot of people hinge all their bets at looking at okay I can only buy one console this generation. Me and the family, we're on a limited budget. Got wife, I got kids or whatever it may be. Um, You know, and they look at what exclusives are available and they say, oh, I got if if I go Xbox, I can play Master Chief. I got Gears of War. I got Forza. I got whatever they promised in the future, which looks exciting. But if I go Sony, then I get Spider-Man and Horizon and, you know, incredible narrative third person action games that they guarantee. But if everything's kind of blurred, then, and and master chief is over there, then it's like, Oh, well, why do I need to buy an Xbox? So that could really hurt the Xbox brand in a way that could backfire. Um, So while I say, I don't care if exclusives go here or there or anywhere, um, I guess it has to be really specific about how they're going to do that moving forward. Are there going to be, 12 month, you know, waiting periods before things move out. Um, Are they going to decide that some Bethesda titles like Elder Scrolls or Starfield are are potentially better sold everywhere or like Call of Duty? It's it's historically multi-platform. It's probably best that it is sold everywhere and, and not just exclusive on one console. So if Xbox truly is anti exclusivity, and you know prefers to be omnipresent (laughs) then um i think that's probably the direction they're going but maybe it's not as dramatic as everybody on the internet thought maybe there's no reason to panic right let's say it is that dramatic right let's go crazy with it let's say we start seeing halo on platforms that we didn't think we'd ever see halo on is that a bad deal no i think halo is a lot of fun dude and the more players the more fun it is right Right. So Hi-Fi Rush, Halo, Starfield, Gears of War, you know, some of these Mm -hmm. titles, if the intent is to be everywhere, what does that exclude? It doesn't exclude anyone. Right. If you have a relationship and that's what's interesting about this is like this console war stuff. And and I definitely say if you have some time, please watch that documentary. It will change your whole perspective. Um, No, well, it it won't change your whole perspective. Let, Let me just, you know. Uh, amend that real quick, you know, uh, mm. append well, one of those words, right? <laughs> it will change and it will make some adjustments to 
how you see the console wars and how we've dealt with that conversation as content creators and gamers throughout the years, right? Mm. It's fascinating. You have to watch it. It is on I YouTube. Wait, dude. I'll, I'll link you. You know, I, I want to hear your your immediate thoughts as soon as you're you're done watching it. So, so yeah. uh, just a quick tease uh, for that particular documentary, uh, Console Wars. Uh, there is a conversation that's happening in in that battle for, of course, Nintendo versus Sega, but even Sega versus Sega, and how the things that we see today by way of Sega as a software company and not as a hardware company anymore. You can see the writing on the wall when you watch the documentary and it all will make sense once you watch that console wars definitely check it out they didn't pay me to say that but maybe they should <laughs> but, but it was really good it's really good okay so so what if they go crazy hi-fi rush gears of war um all the games that we enjoy on certain platforms and the other part i was going to make uh, by way of a note is that these individuals are friends they have friendships among these companies whether it's a nintendo you know, to a PlayStation, to a Xbox, to, to, to a Microsoft, they have relationships. They can, grad, can congratulate each other when they come out with new products and, and new ventures and things of that nature. Yes, they're in competition because they're businesses, mm -hmm. but they, they are still friendships in those companies. And hopefully they're genuine. They're not going to do what happened with Sega when we lost the Dreamcast, right? That, that world really shifted because they lost a the top tier marketing uh, executive during that time fascinating documentary again definitely watch it <laughs> you, you you'll be happy that you did okay so yeah let's go crazy we get all the games we get them on nintendo we get them on, on playstation what does that mean that means everyone who has those platforms they they pay for the hardware now they're able to enjoy those games not only on the streaming side of things but they can actually enjoy that on the system itself right not just streaming only like if they download digitally that title High Fire Rush is on that particular platform now. What what is wrong with that? You know, someone's getting a cut, someone is benefiting, right? Mm -hmm. Both companies would be benefiting if they decide to do that. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. If they go more third party and they localize more games from across the the pond, if you want to call it that, is that a bad thing? I don't no. think it's a I don't think no. it's a bad thing. I think they went as a company because we've been waiting for titles, you know, for such a long time. Like even when you look at Persona Three. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Look what's going on with that. Like that thing is like, just flying off the shelves, quote unquote. Right. And it's an old game, right? Like it's, it's not a, a they're on five right now. Like five is the most recent oh one. My gosh. And Dude, we're this... excited that we're getting three on Xbox because it's never been there before. That's access to a Japanese market that has never been on Xbox. And that's something that needs to happen. That's been dominated by Sony for ages, the Asian market. So I don't necessarily see that you know, as, as a bad thing, but no, it's a win. I don't know. Maybe All we'll around. have that conversation on Thursday. Maybe if we can make some time, maybe we'll go crazy yeah. with it. We'll see. I'm we'll keen. see. But I don't think that it's, it's necessarily a bad thing. Uh, if they decide to go to more of the third party route while still doing a lot of things in house, I don't think that's a bad deal. I don't think that's a but bad. Does deal. that mean, does that mean that Xbox is in trouble? Is that why they're making this move? They just spent all this money on Bethesda and Active Activision. Now they're they're leaking funds because they're not selling enough Xboxes and not enough games are being sold, and everyone's going to Sony and Nintendo. Yeah, I, I don't see it. I don't see it as as a bad thing. I think yeah. if it's one of those things where if you look at history and you want to not repeat a lot of things that took place that were bad, you mm -hmm. have to be the first individuals or the first group to change the trajectory of what's been for so many years, right? We've been mm -hmm. fighting over which console is the best for the last, however, you know, since the eighties, right? Yeah. From, from Nintendo to Sega to, you know, Sony's uh, PlayStation to uh, Sega Saturn to Nintendo 64 uh, to Jaguar to, uh, to PlayStation 2 to Xbox, to, to Xbox 360. Yeah. Like we've been fighting for such a long time, but for what? Like we just want the games to enjoy. And as content creators and entrepreneurs, we want to make sure that we can use those tools and software and even collaborations and partnerships to benefit us in the process. So we all can win if all mm -hmm. these games come out on every single platform that we can use them for. So I don't see it as a bad thing. So I'm going in 
you know, somewhat blind, right? We're, we're, you know, we're speculating, we're just, you know, jabbing here and there, you know, and this conversation, but like, I don't, I don't care, you know, about, you know, how the conversation is going to go. I'm just glad that the conversation is taking place, right? Because we're at a place now with, with the technology that we have that all the games can pretty much be everywhere if the, the hardware can handle it, like literally. Right. So we have Nintendo Switch 2, maybe uh, on, you know, rumors or you know, I don't know if it's speculation or rumors or anything at this point. But if the hardware can handle it, I mean, Hi-Fi Rush is not a tough game to handle. Right. I mean, maybe Halo, of course, Gears. Halo yes, could be right? tough, Gears. Yeah. You know, but outside of that, I mean, what are we are we complaining about anything here? I think this is good. Yeah. I think this is good. So, yeah, that's where we stand there. OK, 